We are live and we have another episode of Adam and Jake on the movies. As always, I'm Jake. I'm Adam. And this week we are talking about keeping the faith. So real quick, we um, every week watch a movie, answer a few questions, talk about the movie, say if we recommend it or not, and then we get out as quick as possible. That's kind we're of the in, plan. And we're out. We're out. Yes. Uh, so this week we did Keeping the Faith, which is, let me get you, do you have that bio pulled up for it? Yep, I've got the synopsis and okay. uh, it's right. a movie. Hold on, from... hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, okay. One second. Um, let me, let me, we're so on top of things here. Okay, <laughs> so it was released in 2000, directed by Edward Norton, starring Ben Stiller, Edward Norton, and Jenna Elfman, and it was written by Stuart Lumber? I think so. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. So it's about two friends, a priest and a rabbi, and they fall in love with the same woman they knew in their youth, but the religious uh, position of both men denies them romance. All right. And that's so the basic premise for the most part. You'd seen this before. I had not I'd seen this, this um, three other times. Okay. So uh, initial reaction, since I hadn't seen it, I'll go with my initial reaction. First. Okay. Um, well, that was good. That was good. Didn't blow me away. Uh, you know, it was a, uh, I thought it was fun. It's nice to see Ben Stiller in a role where he's not constantly pooped on, but he's yeah. a little bit more, he does get pooped on a little bit, but it's a little less, yeah, it's a little less Ben Stiller pooped on. Yeah. Uh, because he's very successful. Like, he's very successful at his job. He's very good at it. Uh, I thought that, um, I thought it was well, it was well, mostly well acted. I thought the characters were pretty fun. Uh, it was a bright movie. It was a pretty happy movie. Yeah, yeah. That, um, so yeah, I thought afterwards I felt yeah, I felt satisfied. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, what about you? Now this was a movie that um, I found weird that Edward Norton had directed this movie because he's usually in darker type movies. So you would expect, you know, he's been in Fight Club and um, just a lot of darker type type movies. So I was kind of surprised that he directed this, but he directed this for his mother. So oh. it was kind of like, you know, a light movie for his mother, I think maybe before she passed away, I might be wrong about that part of it. But I had, I'd read a couple of different things, so I could be wrong. But after seeing this movie, I, um, I enjoyed this movie. It was, it was a light romantic comedy. It was the kind of movie, whenever I watched it originally, that I wanted to set out to make like a light, fun, it wasn't really raunchy. It had some laughs, they weren't belly laughs. I thought the chemistry between the, um, the leads were good. And I thought it was a fun movie. I just had a few minus, a minute, miniature criticisms. That's the perfect transition. What would you, what would you change about it? Well, I'm sure you know one thing that I would change, <laughs> as I say about every movie. The movie is too long. It is two hours and eight minutes long. In my oh, rom com, you shouldn't have over an hour and forty five minutes max. This could have been trimmed. Many scenes could have been trimmed down. Um, especially, I think during the third act. I think the third mm -hmm. act could be trimmed. But I, I think um, that's my biggest criticism is it's, it's about 25 minutes too long. And it near, it, whenever I have to shift in my seat several times, it's, it might not be because the movie's bad, but it's because the seat's uncomfortable and the movie's too long. <laughs> I, I completely agree with you. I think it's about 25 to 30 minutes too long. I think that the, the beginning it takes so long to get into the story. That's true too. That I, I'm like, all right, let's just get into this and let's go. I do appreciate kind of how we started with him drunk, but I still like, 
I was just get into it. Then I thought the second act was was good, but then I was like, she's here, and then she's I can't really figure out if she left yet. Right. Uh, so there was a lot going on there. And then the third act, I thought, again, was, I thought the third act was okay. Okay. I wouldn't cut as much from that. I just thought I think it took too long to get into it. It took too long for them to try to convince the audience that they were friends. Yeah. You got it. You're friends. Let's just do that. Let's just be friends and let's just move on. Um, controversial. You ready? Okay the number one thing that I would do if I were to direct this film, recast Jenna Elfman's character. Really? Recast her. Okay. I, I did not like it one bit. I thought that she was, like, even her introduction into the film where she comes off the airplane with her glasses on. Yeah. All of a sudden, I just hated her. I didn't like her. And okay. then throughout the entire movie... I just kept getting more and more tired of her. I didn't like the way that she talked. I didn't like the way that she carried herself. Uh, I think she she took so much. Like there's a like even a Taylioni in yeah the other film that we watched. Or disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Even her in that film, I like her. I think she's kind of funny. She's kind of you don't take her as seriously, but you still kind of know she does what she's doing. Yeah. I think casting someone like her in that role could have been good. That would be uh, good casting. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who else. Even, um, who was the other character? Who was the other one? Uh, she's from that family of actors from Flirting with Disaster. Oh, the um, Arquette lady? Yeah, yeah, Patricia Arquette. Even her in there, like I was thinking a couple other people, but I'm like, I don't think they could pull off. But, um, or a Cameron Diaz. I could see Cameron Diaz in there. I Somebody see like there. that. I really did not like her character one bit. She, I think she took away from the movie and I didn't like that she was pulling these two people apart because I liked Ben Stiller's character. I liked Edward Norton's character. Right. Um, but the fact that she's pulling them apart, I'm like, go to San Francisco. Nobody needs you here. Yeah, because she kind of came in out of the blue, yeah. and they had been lifelong friends this entire time. So I understand she's making the glue of their friendship. She she was trying to be the Yoko Ono of their friendship. Yeah, and I also think the whole like rabbi and priest dynamic I thought was fun. Right. I see where he was going with it, but it just felt a little bit forced, and it didn't really just. It didn't connect with me. So it didn't really feel authentic so. then at all. Yeah, it really didn't because I was like, this is kind of a weird space that we're in right now because I'm like, I know that priests aren't supposed to be married and I don't know about rabbis. I yeah, I wasn't sure about the rabbi that. either. So I guess the whole they time, someone, married, married somebody, like married somebody Jewish or something Jewish, like that. Yeah, so that was just where I was. Okay. I don't know. But anyway, anyway. All right, so let's switch gears. <laughs> We spent too much time talking about that. What do you think about the main character's arc? Who would you say is the main character? What did you think about their arc? I'm going to put, um, I'm going to do a dual main character of Edward Norton and Ben Stiller. Sorry, I've taken this first because I. That's who I think as well. I think that's who I think as well. I think that it's there, but it's not as strong as it could be. Yeah. Because I feel like there's similar people at the beginning than they are at the end. I would almost say Jenna Elfman's character arcs more than theirs does. Yeah. Because she changes her life around way more. Yeah. So I, I think it's a little little iffy, but I would I would say if Elfman's character, yes. Their characters could have been stronger. You could have set them up a little bit earlier. So that by the end, we can kind of see their payoff a little bit. Yeah, I what agree you, with that. I'm, I'm going to go with pretty much what you said. Um, the three, because there are three, basically two leads, and then she's also the, the lead female, and she does have the big, bigger character arc, because really the only thing with Ben, uh, ben Stiller's character is his mother has to accept 
that she's not Jewish. That's the mm -hmm. biggest hurdle. Because yeah. he's going out on the, all these dates and he doesn't like any of these women, but yet there's this woman that he likes. She happens to be not Jewish. So what's the hurdle for him? Over, you know, getting his mother and then the hurdle for Edward Norton is he's going to basically have to give up his entire, what he's worked for his entire life. Every, and then, yeah. And then the same for her, but she's the one that ends up making the decision. So yeah, she yeah. does have, you know, she does have the biggest. That's a good point. Ben Stiller's arc is very, like his stakes. He doesn't have that much to lose. Are very low. But yet Both he's the one who gains the most. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good point. <laughs> he gets to stay in the city. He gets everything that he wanted and he gets the girl. And he gets to keep his friend, keep his job. Edward Norton risks giving up his entire job, but then ultimately does it. And not because he doesn't want to, but because he can't have the girl. Yeah. If he could have the girl, he'd still give it up. If he was to make the decision of saying, if he was to make a strong decision to say, I would have to give everything up. And what I believe is more important than in this relationship I think that would be a lot stronger for yeah. him for her her stakes are living arrangements yeah where she wants to live east coast or west coast basically yeah yeah so I, I yeah it definitely could have been stronger yeah I agree with you I agree it with you there. stronger all right uh what was what's next uh what about a what about a secondary character I'll um I'll just say a quick one. He wasn't like a huge, huge character, but I liked the, I, I had him pulled up here. He's the, um, the lead rabbi. His name is uh, Father Har uh, Harvell, I think. And he's by, played by Milos Foreman, who is also a director. Okay. Um, I just thought he was a good little, he, he had a brief little role as the father and he was kind of talking to, um, I guess he talked to uh, Edward Norton's character about, you know, about the sacrifices it takes. And I just found that a really nice moment. It wasn't anything special. You know the moment I'm talking about? It's like he's in there and he's talking, he's telling about what, you know, what it is, whether he should give up basically his life. And then he tells the, you know, there's sacrifices you're going to have to make and you're going to be questioned and you're going to, you know, all these self inner inner things. And it, it didn't really add much to the movie, but I thought the scene was a nice scene and I thought it would be something very true. Because I mean, these have to be something that some of these, um, you know, these people in these religions have to think about. Mm -hmm. Am I strong enough to give up love, a love for a woman to, you know, fulfill my promise to God? And so I just thought it was a nice little touching moment. You know, it wasn't silly. It wasn't over dramatic. I just thought it was a nice little moment. So I thought his character was a nice little secondary character. You know, nothing great, but you know, that was mine. Yeah. No one else really stood out <laughs> as secondary. The, you know, like the bartender. Yeah. I think he was. He. I, I would. I don't even. I can't. I don't even know. Who. I'm like looking it up. Sorry if I'm looking off camera. It's because I'm looking at my yeah. I'm looking down at my TV as well. Uh, but the the bartender is that um I think it's Larry Friedman. Is that Larry Friedman? I don't know who it is. Or is it Paul E? Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I would say the the no, it's not Paul e. Um, yeah, I would say the bartender maybe. I uh, didn't care too much for the mom. Uh, she was kind of unlikable. Yeah, which that's uh, that's Anne Bancroft, which I'm pretty sure is yep from The Graduate. Yep. Yeah. And I thought she it's was a lot completely of... different role. Yeah, completely different. <laughs> completely different. But I yeah I thought she um, oh, she's okay. Oh, she's fine. But yeah, I would say probably the bartender. Okay. Okay. Whoever the bartender happened to be. Uh, okay, so what about the, let's talk about the music. I thought the music was good. I know there were a few moments where the music kind of came in and there was a song playing. I didn't really identify many of the songs. I know the song, uh, the Matchbox 20, uh, the Rob Thomas and Santana song, Smooth. That, okay, yep, yep. There. That um, one. 
Uh, and I think it had had your typical romantic comedy score. It was, it, I think it fit. It wasn't outstandish. I don't really remember anything. It just seemed like your typical, what you'd expect as far as I remember. Yeah, same thing. Same thing with me. Um, there's very few sick, uh, uh, romantic comedies that have good music. Yeah. I think that um, the classics do, like uh, You've Got Mail, I think it's got really good music. Serendipity, to me, I think has great music. That's a good movie. It. It's a fun movie. I like that movie. I like those a lot. But this one just kind of fit the mold. Of, yeah. I don't, you know. It's, just it's like any, any composer could just slap together the music for this. Yeah, and let's see what the next, let's see what songs are coming out in the next year that we can slap in, in there. for marketing's yeah. sake. So, yeah. Uh, what was your favorite scene? You want me to take this one? Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, I, I, my favorite scenes, I'll, I'll say scenes, is that they're kind of the montage back and forth scenes as they're both growing their uh, churches. Yeah. Like you see at first that they, they kind of go like as they're learning, like Ben Stiller's there and he's like, his mom says something and he's like, thanks mom, because there's like 15 people in the crowd and then when Edward Norton's trying to train and he, it gets a little silly, he's walking with that thing and then he accidentally hits the guy in the head and yep. then he catches something on fire and has to jump in the holy water. <laughs> so there's a lot of little fun little things and I think if I remember correctly, I think it's a montage cutting back and forth between the two. Mm -hmm. And then they grow their, their crowds at the very end. And they both, I mean, not the end, but the end of the montage. And they both have big crowds and they're successful. So that whole little thing. And I like also when, uh, when um, Ben Stiller goes out on the date with the fitness lady. I thought that was, but I also thought that when he goes out on the date with that fitness lady that asked him to punch her. <laughs> That's a that dives more into the traditional Ben Stiller movie because he typically, that's the kind of stuff that happens. Or when he's like, <laughs> that cab, go, 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 go. And she falls down to the curb and she's like, oh, wow. Yeah. So Yeah. There was definitely some Ben Stiller early on. I love <laughs> the punching. Yeah. Part. I, I was a big fan of that one. That actually, last night when I was watching it, I think that one was my favorite scene. Okay. But I was going to use the scene in the bar with the, with the, with the confessional, with the bartender. I thought that turned out to be, to me, if you put everything together, that was probably like the most like impactful scene. Yeah. But I really did like the bad date that he had. And then I, you know, it kind of made me sad when he had the good date with the, uh, with the, uh, she was, I guess, a journalist or reporter yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, that one kind of made me sad. And they never really tied up that loose end. I think. No, it was only like that one thing that I've, I've seen her in one or two other things. That girl was in a soap opera. Oh. And, uh, but she, she's mainly, I've never really seen her in that many other movies. I've just, I saw, looked her up one time and she's in a soap opera. I would love to have seen her come back at the end and be the other, almost like be someone that could pull him away. Yeah, yeah. That makes him make that last decision, that final decision. But, uh, you know, like, I get the, I see why it's there. But yeah, I would probably say the confessional scene I thought was, that was pretty good. All righty. So what, uh, what's your, oh, uh, let me, Who's, whose turn is it? My turn? It's your turn to take it, yeah. Okay. Final thoughts on this film. I think it's very obvious that it was Edward Norton's first direct, it was his directorial debut, and yeah. really it's the last one until Motherless Brooklyn. Yeah. I think it was pretty obvious because I don't think the characters were completely shaped out exactly how they needed to be. I think the story had some holes in it, like we talked about with that one character, the reporter who goes away and never comes back. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of goofiness at the beginning that that is either unnecessary or does, or like- It doesn't really fit in. It's not there for the rest of the movie. So it's like, do we need it? If you do, let's put more in later. Um, I think that, uh, I think there's too much too much time and too little story. Uh, I don't think that 
Jenna Elfman's character really accomplishes what she needs to accomplish. I don't think the stakes are right for it. All that to say, that's me being very critical as a, yeah. you know, study, someone who studies film. So do I think it's the best film I've ever seen? No, definitely not the best film I've ever seen. Uh, do I think it's, you know, if you like Ben Stiller, if you like Edward Norton, if you like these, these fun little films, is it worth the time? Probably. Like if you're one of those people where you're like, we watch a movie every weekend, we just need a movie to watch. Yeah. If we want yeah. it to be a rom-com, throw this one in the mix. You'll, you'll be like, okay, great. We watched it. Now let's move on. Yeah. Um, definitely has good name, pow, star power in it. Yeah. But um Will I watch it again? Probably not. Probably. Not. <laughs> what about you? I, I, the older that I've gotten, the less, I, and I, and I say this very softly, the less that I like it. Now I do like the movie, um, but I agree with all the points that you said, excluding the Jenna Elfman thing. That's the only thing. <laughs> I knew that was going to be controversial. Um, I thought she, I thought she did a good job. <laughs> But, um, and I thought the three leads had good chemistry. However, um, I could understand, and Cameron Diaz would be a better choice as well. That being said, we must have a thing for Ben Stiller movies because we've watched several. <laughs> we, have. we have The Cable Guy, yeah. Flirting with Disaster, this movie, and then The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Oh, yeah. So, we does good uh, movies. Yeah, yeah. So I would say um, if you like romantic comedies, check it out Don't, you're not going to be blown away it's going to be nothing you haven't seen before it's long it's a little long like we said but it's fun and it's a little bit silly like it, they, it, it seems like they they made let's do a take more serious and let's do a take more slapstick and then they edit it together a little bit of both which makes for an uneven movie but slightly enjoyable I, and i would give it out of four stars, I would give it two and a half. Yeah, I was going to say two and a half. Two and Definitely a half. not not a fifty percent or a little bit above fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. Did you think I was going to like it? Yeah. Did yeah. You? Okay. Because it's also <laughs> I feel it's, like I've let you down with two straight no, movies. No, no, I'm I'm glad that you that we've had different differing opinions on some of these, but it's I thought you would like it, but I thought you would like it due to. Um, it's kind of a it's more it's not a raunchy romantic comedy they don't they yeah. don't get into a lot of the the sex talk and even when they do they keep it kind of light and pg-13 ish and um because i've seen this movie through uh, this will be the fourth time but twice i had seen it on on like a date we had watched it on a date so i i figured it was a good you know if you were going to go out on a date it's a good clean date movie where you don't have to watch there and like sit there and be like ooh, there's like a lot of uh, sexual raunchy scenes that could make a first date uncomfortable could make it very uncomfortable yeah, yeah okay all right, so, all right. You know. fair enough fair enough um i know four ben stiller movies we've seen two christopher guest movies so uh next week we will have um dodgeball so i'm dodgeball. looking forward to that now Okay. Do you, do you have any ideas for next week? Let's go away from. Let's go away from Ben Stiller. No. Do you have anything in mind? I I never do. I kind of like. Okay, I'm being very selfish, but I like when you pick them because it's okay. always new stuff. But if you want something new, I can I find something, something new. new. I will pick something new. It's another um, David O. Russell movie. <laughs> I heart Huckabee. I heart Huckabees. Okay. So, Dustin Hoffman, Jude Law, Jason Schwartzman, Leah Tomlin, Mark Wahlberg, and Ni Naomi Watts is the cast. That and sounds David good o. Russell to me. film. David O. Russell. Yeah, and this one, I, I'm going to have to rewatch it. I've seen it twice, but it's been a while. So, and I had, um, I won't say anything about it right now. All right, cool. Well, we'll be back next week with I Heart Huckabees. That's going to do it for On the Movies. So I'm Jake. And I'm Adam. And we will see you next week with I Heart Huckabees. Have a good one. All right, you too. See ya.